So this is the plasma gun that I thought we can use for this chapter. And this is one of the models that we are currently doing here for Project Mango. So this is a model of the plasma gun of one of the scientists in our short movie, modeled by Francesco. It is not finished yet, so it is still a work in progress. So all I did was add a few very simple materials to that. So this gun is something that you can here grab with your hands, so our character can put in his hand and hold it and then shoot with plasma or nuclear bullets or I don't know. So anyway, it's like the gun that we will be using in this chapter. And I thought that we can use Cycles, Blender's new render engine for that. So I've already set it here from Blender Render, which would be the default, to Cycles Render. And that allows us to also use the preview rendering. So I'm sure that most of you already saw how that works. So when you switch to Cycles, then you can use the interactive rendering mode. So if I now go here to the shading buttons, I can switch to rendered viewport shading and that will give you a real-time preview of the model with the material and also the lighting. So with the middle mouse button we can now drag just as we would do in the normal viewport and then see how the render automatically updates. Now the materials that I've applied here are very basic and simple and they don't even look very good. But uh, for this example, that should be enough. And what I did was to create a metal material. So if I select this thing here, then I can go to material. And this is now using the metal material. And inside here, I've applied an orange glow material. And you can see that the properties of the cycles materials are quite different to blenders. So the buttons look different. We have different options here. But one thing that is very easy to do is to just add a color. So if I now go here and drag the slider, then you can see how the color changes. So for example, if I want to make these things here, these cables, if I want to make them a little bit darker, then I just go to the color and, well, make it darker. Then we have different shaders. So there we've got the metal shader and we can activate that here by clicking on this material index. So the surface is now set to a different kind of shader. So here on surface we have different shaders, for example, diffuse, glossy or emission. And here you have some basic parameters that you can set here. And that is all I did. I didn't do any fancy node setups, which you could do, which would also make it probably a little bit more interesting. But for this example, I wanted to use the most easiest ones. But if you're curious, then you can drag this down and you can see that this is now the typical solid viewport shading. So you can also manipulate your object from here and it will update down there in the preview. But what I wanted to show you is that you can now also switch to the node editor. And here, if you have not set it to composite, that we already know, but to shading, then you can now create your own materials by adding or manipulating some of these nodes. So if you add a new material, for example, let me just divide that to better be able to select this. So here we have an object that only uses the metal material. Okay, so this is one material that has here the emissive glow, but also you have the simple surface shader and you could also change it to glossy or glass or anything else. But as soon as you add a shader here, you will also have a node tree just like that. So you can also change the color, not over here, but there. You also have the basic parameters, for example, the roughness of the diffuse shader. You can drag that here and it will also update over there. So this is really the same thing as here. But what you can do here is to also combine different shaders. So I can hit Shift A to add a new material node and then go to Shader and first of all maybe add a mix shader. And a mix shader is something that, well, it lets you mix different shaders. So here we have a green output and here we have a green input also here. So the material output is that what will be rendered. But if you want to just create a color, for example here RGB, then of course you can just drag it in here, but that will not really work. 
because you need to have a shader. So the only thing that you can do with that is to use this color and then put it also into a yellow node. For example, the color of the diffuse. So now we have the color of this RGB value connected to the color input of the diffuse and that will here be transformed into this shader and this shader output goes here into the surface input. Now you can also mix different shaders. For example, if I duplicate this, then I can have two different diffuse shaders and mix them. So this one could go in here, this one could go in here, and if I set this to yellow and this to blue, then in theory the result should be some grayish color. Okay, so that is the 50% result of these two shaders. And if I set this to factor one, then the second input will be used. And on factor zero, you will only have the effect of the diffuse. So that is how you can use these shaders here, but I don't want to go too much into detail. After all, this is just the tracking DVD and not the cycles DVD. And for cycles, you could use a whole new DVD. So this would lead too far if we would also go into shader creation. But just to show you how you can deal with that, um, here you can also manipulate the nodes. So I, for this I just want to erase that and use a simple diffuse shader. Maybe use it like a gray, something like that. So it's definitely not pretty, but to demonstrate you how you can use cycles it is enough. So now we've got that. One thing that is missing is a material down there. So I've just selected this thing here and I guess that could also be the metal material. Okay, now the metal material is still very glossy and that would mean that in our scene that we will be rendering, we would really see the reflections of our environment. And because I want to cheat a little bit, that is not what I want. So to make this a little bit more blurry, in order to not see the reflections too good, I go to the roughness slider of this glossy material. I've selected the metal material here. And with the roughness slider, you can lower the glossiness. So now it will all be blurry reflections. So it still looks a little bit glossy, but you won't be able to really see details in the reflection. And that is exactly what I want. And to be able to easier import that, I have grouped this. So I've selected everything that belongs to this gun and then move it to layer one, like that. And then, because I forgot to group these, maybe that, maybe not that. So that will go to a different layer. So maybe let's use only these ones. So uh, they get the silver material. So that will be shiny, but let's make it a little less glossy like that. Let's have a look. Okay, so that is this. And now I also put them to the group. So I just select them and then go here to the object properties and add them to the group. I can select the group here. So that will be the gun. Also this one, add group and select the group done. All right, so that should be now ready to import. So save the file and then open up the track. So here we are at our track again. And before I import the gun, I first want to create a proxy so that we had a better and faster playback of the distorted files. So just to repeat that very quickly, here in the tracking settings of the camera track or object, doesn't really matter, I go to the proxy and timecode setting, go to frame one, and because I'm OS 10 and the system probably has some problems with FFmpeg, uh, I just reload to make sure that everything is all right, then go to proxy and timecode and enable 50% for build undistorted and then build the proxy. You can also activate a timecode to be really sure that the timing is correct. So use any of these, then click on build proxy. And when that has finished, you can go to the 3D viewport and here in the properties, go to background images and then switch to 50% proxy. So that will load and playback a little bit better and faster.
So now I can import that object, our plasma gun. So in file, I go to either append or to link. Append would be useful if you want to still be able to manipulate that. And in our case, maybe that will be good. But also we can just try out link. So again, in my root folder of this track, I have created a folder named library. And in here we have the gun. So I go to group, select the group named gun, link append from library. And it is still a little bit big. But first of all, I want to put that here to the place where the cube is. So Shift S3, select that, Shift S2, and then also Shift right click, Control C, copy rotation and copy location. Although we have already we already have that, and then just scale it down like so. Then look from the 3D viewport. Try to make sure that it really matches the rotation of the cube, especially of the arm. And then of course also parent it. So shift select the cube, control P, set parent to object. And now our gun will follow the arm. And it's really a huge gun. Well, that's good. So the cube will go to layer 20, so the junk layer. And now we've got our gun. Okay, so we've got that and now we can also switch to the cycles viewport rendering. So up here, go to cycles render and if you switch to viewport rendered shading, then you can see the object and if you hit Alt A, it will even move. But something that still doesn't work in cycles is the preview of the movie clip in the background. So that is something that you cannot have with cycles and that is why most of the time I'm still using the Blender internal render engine for any tracking work. It still works pretty good for that kind of stuff, but of course cycles will allow you to do much more things. But currently it is still a little bit limited, so that's why I still like the Blender internal render. All right, now of course to integrate that we also have to set up a composite and therefore we need some render layers. So first of all, let's have a look at the render settings of cycles. And maybe for that, let's switch to the compositing layout already. So compositing, let's first have a look at the render settings. So once you are in cycles here, you can see that not only the materials have changed, but also the whole render settings look different now. We still have the dimensions. Then we have some kind of output, which is also not exciting. So let's collapse that. But here we have a few new settings. For example, there is integrator and these are mostly the quality settings. So that is also where you can set how many passes are being rendered. So if I now switch to the viewport rendering, you can see that it starts tracing something. So it will be uh, rendering path tracing and currently it stops at 10 samples. And of course, the more samples you have, the better the quality will be. So if you look here in the integrator, you can set the samples. And if I set for the preview 100 samples, then it will go on until it reaches that number of samples. And you can see that the quality now gets better and better. And ideally at 100 or 200 samples, the quality will be good enough for a final render. Now, depending on the materials that can also take up to 500 or even 1000 samples until you really have a noise free image. But in our case, I really want to limit that at 100. But of course for the preview, I think that 10 is really enough. So for the final render, that would be something different. So there eventually you will have to have much more samples. Uh, and if you want to wait until you reach a certain amount of quality, then you can set the preview to zero because then Blender will just continue on sampling and sampling and sampling indefinitely until you just stop it by um, setting the stop button here. So you can just pause it and after that it will continue or just increase the number of samples here. So with that, you can just wait until it reaches a final quality and then set the render samples to this. But for the preview, I think 10 is really okay. So let's say for our test composites, maybe use 40 samples. And for testing, that should really be enough. Then you can also set the number of bounces. 
the number of light paths, but I don't want to go into detail because it would really, it would make this tutorial much too long. But what I do want to do is to set the integrator to the limited global illumination preset. And even though you have seen this name all the time, it was originally set to full global illumination, but it's just because of the updating of the button. So just don't care about that. So that would be the setting for full global illumination for the best quality. And for speeding it up, you can also set it to limited global illumination. So that will lower the number of light paths and also disable caustics, which will make rendering faster. Okay, but let's move on. So next you have film and if you enable transparent, then you will see some checkerboard texture in the background. And basically that is enabling alpha. So let's keep this enabled. Then performance, you can set the number of threads and different ways to accelerate the rendering. So static can be faster and caching the BVH can also be faster. The thing that is interesting for us are the layers. And you can see that we already have foreground and background layer. And just like before, of course, our gun should be on the foreground layer, that is layer one. And the plane should be on the background layer, which is layer 11. And since a couple of weeks, we also have ambient occlusion. And I think that ambient occlusion is already activated. So if I now go here to the world settings, then you can see we have this checkbox ambient occlusion. So the ambient occlusion is also enabled here in this preview rendering. Now, if you disable that and render then, you will still have the effect of ambient occlusion, but the lighting that is now being used is just of the world color. So that is here. If you want to, you can also enable use nodes to have more options. For example, if the surface is set to background, then we can also add a texture to that. Now, ideally, you would have a spherical environment map, but I don't have that. The only thing that I currently have is one image of our movie that I've saved before. So if I now go to color and want to add a background image that also will appear in the reflections, I click on this little button here and here I can add an image texture. Environment texture would for example be an HDR spherical map, but I don't have that. So let me just add an image texture, which will look totally fake, but um, with glossy reflections, I think it should still work good enough. So image texture, now I go to open and in my root folder, I also have this folder named text and in there is one image of our movie. So I just save that, open the image and still I don't see anything. But to be able to see that in the background, I go back to my render settings and in film, I disable transparent for a second and it is still gray. So the mapping is not correct. But when I now go back to the world settings, I can add a vector and that would be the mapping, so to say. And here, for example, we could set this to object or camera. So now we can see this and it doesn't look correct at all. But if I look through the camera, then at least I have some bluish reflections here in our metal material. And that is all I need. So even though this mapping is totally wrong, I admit that, um, it still does the trick to get some reflections here in our metal. And then enable transparent again. So now we only see the reflections. Also, I have disabled ambient occlusion. If you want to make this image brighten up our scene, you can also drag up the strength. So if you drag this up, then this image will now be used for lighting our scene. All right, maybe something like that should be fine. Now let's go back to our render layers. So here in the background, I want to render the ambient occlusion pass. In the foreground, maybe we can also enable ambient occlusion just to be able to use it in case we want it. But also I want to enable the emit pass because I have set these as emission materials. So if we enable that, we can make use of that to add some glow to our glowing objects here. Now you can also enable the single passes 
maybe I can use that just to show you what they do. So if you want to really combine the combined image from the render layers, then you can use these single passes to combine your image from these passes manually. All right, so now I press F12 to render that, but it doesn't really look correct. So here, that is of course not right. So let's investigate and have a look here at our node setup. So the movie clip is of course all right. Then we've got our background layer with some shadow here. So that is the ambient occlusion, but the shadow pass is black. And that is simply because we don't have any shadow pass yet. So that is something that still is not implemented in Cycles and also makes kind of sense because it is a global illumination renderer. So shadow is not that defined, but even the direct shadow from the lamps is not implemented. So we can just erase that. So kill these nodes. So now we only have the ambient occlusion on top of our footage. Of course, this cube here, I will erase that because it looks horrible. So that is something that we don't even want to keep. And because our plasma gun is up here, it wouldn't affect the ambient occlusion on the floor anyway. So we might even not render that at all. Of course, the shadow would have an impact on the floor, but compositing this is too complicated for now. I mean, we could do that, but that takes too long. So for this tutorial, we will just have to live with the fact that this Plasma gun is not casting any shadow. Okay, so we've got that. And then here, we also have the floor. Now, why is that? I mean, the floor should just be on the second layer. And if I select the floor and have a look at that, in fact, it is just on the second layer. So why do we also have the floor on the second layer? Well, that is because the mask layers currently do not really work. So if the object that is here on the background layer as the shadow catcher, if that doesn't have a material, then it cannot get material overwrite. And material overwrite is the technique that Cycles uses internally to produce this mask layer thing. So one way would be to just disable the mask layer and just render like that. And that also makes sense because there is nothing that goes through the floor. Or you might also try to just add the default material to this floor and then render again. And if my theory is correct, then this will now work. So let's see. And it turns out I was right. So just adding the fake material to our background plane was enough to really uh, make use of the mask layer. And that is because internally Cycles adds a holdout material to everything that is on the mask layer, but it can only do that if there is material to override. Maybe that will be fixed in the future. Anyway, the thing that I'm really missing here is vector blur. That is also something that still isn't implemented into Cycles, so we have no vector blur yet. This is on the to-do list. It will be added soon, hopefully. We will also get real ray-traced motion blur, but for now you will have to live without that. But there is a way how we can still render the vector blur for that, even though we don't have it in Cycles, and that is by making use of Blender internal. Because what you can do is to just duplicate the whole scene and render a new scene with Blender internal and include that into this composite. So if you want to duplicate everything, just link everything in the scene, then you can go here in the menu bar to the scene buttons, then click on this little plus sign and then link the objects. So that now creates this new scene and let's call it blur because the only purpose of this scene is to render the vector blur. So if you play back, still everything is here. So what we can do now is to switch this new scene that is automatically being activated to blender render or blender internal. And the only thing that we need is the vector blur for the object. So we can also disable the background. We also can disable emit and ambient occlusion and all that stuff. So the only thing we need is really the vector. And for that, we can also in the shading panel disable ray tracing because that will rendering the scene much faster. Also, just to be sure, disable environment lighting and ambient occlusion. So now with that, let me also give a name. So foreground blur, or let's just call it blur also. 
So that is blur just for the first layer. In this case, the mask layer will also work. So let's go back to the scene and then because this render layer doesn't have any vector blur, we can add this new render layer, input render layer, and then switch the scene from the normal scene to blur. And because the only render layer that is inside that is also blur, we can now use that. So let's press F12. And now it has finished. And in our composite here, in theory, it should update. Apparently it doesn't, which is a little bug, but still we can see the vector blur here. So the fact that these are not updating, I have no idea why that happens, but still there is the speed pass and we can use that by changing the input of the speed input of the vector here to this one. So now our cycles render layer will get the vector blur or the motion information from our Blender internal layer and it will be blurred just a little bit on this frame. Apparently there's not much motion blur. So here the end result will be a frame with a little bit of blur. Maybe we should switch to a frame that has a little bit more blur. So that would be here, for example, where he shoots. So let's render that frame. Now we have that motion blur here inside of our composite. Now, if you want to have a little bit more blur, then just increase the blur factor to one, also enable curved. So that will apply the motion blur to your cycles render. Okay, so next let's have a look at the passes here. So we have on the render layer of the foreground of our cycles render, we have the combined image. Then there is the alpha pass, of course, the Z buffer, the speed, which shows up for some reason, but that is not really there. Then we have the ambient inclusion, which unfortunately also includes the background plane, which should not happen. But well, it's cycles is not finished yet, so well, that might also work out in the future. So that is the ambient inclusion. Then we have the emit pass, and that is one pass that we make use of very soon. Then there is diffuse direct light, diffuse indirect light, the diffuse color pass, glossy direct, glossy indirect, and so on. So you can also do some denoising on the single passes. You can use them, you can control them and combine them manually. So if you would have some transparent object, that would be here in the transmission. So one thing that I want to do is to make use of the ambient occlusion. And just like normally with Blender internal, we can also use the alpha for that to fix this uh, ambient occlusion pass. So let's first have a look at the alpha channel. So here's alpha and we need the information for the ambient occlusion layer. So everything that is white here in the alpha should be white in the ambient occlusion too. So what we can do is to hit shift A, add color mix. First invert the alpha like that. Then bring that in here, set this to screen, not add in this case, which is very important because the ambient occlusion also has some areas that are white already. So if you would have set this to add, then you would have values that are uh, above one, which is not ideal. In fact, you should really avoid that. But now with screen, that can never be bigger than one. So let's have a look. Shift right mouse button. By the way, this is a feature that I didn't know before, but it is very useful to use the backdrop in the compositor to right away see the values. So shift right click here can show you the actual values. So before I would have to go to the viewer node output of the image editor to be able to shift click or to click to see the values, but shift right clicking here shows you the values of the pixels down there. So no value is above one, so that is good. And we can make use of that to, if you want to, to control the appearance of the combined pass by multiplying that. So if I put the image in mix and set this to multiply, then I can darken my image with the ambient occlusion pass like that.
Maybe also use the converter to control the contrast of the ambient occlusion. So if I make this darker and this brighter, then I can increase the contrast like so, maybe not so much. Okay, so that is this. And after that, I want to make a glowing object. And to do that, I will make use of the emit pass. So first let's add a blur filter and drag the emit pass in here. Control shift click on that. Then go to fast Gaussian, set this to, let's try 20. So that is now a nice blur and we can also add or screen it on top of this result here. But because we also have the vector blur, I think I want to do that after that. So first the result of this ambient occlusion and combined pass. And after that, I will just put the blur on top of this result here. So shift A, add color mix, drag that in here and put the blur on top of this, set this to screen. And now we have glowing stuff on our plasma gun, like that. Of course, we can also color correct that. So if this is too dark or too bright, then here we can control that. All right, now let me do one adjustment and that is to just get rid of this ugly cube. So in the 3D view, just grab the cube, erase it and now render again. All right, so that looks okay. Of course, we are missing the shadow of the plasma gun on the floor and here on this body. So that is not really realistic, but for now that would be too much work. So next, when you are satisfied with this render, then you can put the uh, samples up. So let's go to the integrator and set the render samples to 100. Also the render preset to 720p. Also set an output. So output relative path render like that. Render PNGs or TGAs, whatever you want. And then click on animation to render that. All right, so this is the finished render result and it looks okay, even though, of course, we should probably have done some masking work. So when the gun is going behind its body, of course, we would have to mask out this part of the shot. But for now, it is good enough. So that is how you can do object tracking and camera tracking.